one two one two welcome to tk's two cents tuesdays and thursdays unless otherwise stated at 12 p.m eastern time i'm here to talk about a couple of tweets from the week and take you beyond what the 280 characters that we usually get can give you today's topic always think twice but never overthink how do you balance thinking critically without being self-defeating in the way that you analyze your decisions how do you discuss you know assessing things rationally without being guilty of the kind of analysis paralysis that holds you back from living your best life let's dive in with tweet number one and we'll get into it <clears throat> if you spend all your energy debating with people about your dreams how are you going to find the time to actually pursue them so uh, interesting story about a uh, guy I know Daniel Krawitz he has this business idea called matter pool he's really excited about it right and he's just had a bunch of people arguing with them telling him all of their intellectual theoretical or some would even say their entrepreneurial based on business experience reasons for why his idea won't work and i saw this tweet from from him the other day it might have been today but it made me laugh because this tweet was basically like i've been spending a lot of time trying to argue with people who want to debate me about the potential profitability of my business idea. Uh, going forward, if anybody wants to argue with me, uh, you need to pay me for my time. And, and I laughed at that because it captures something very important about um, economics and about how to make good decisions in life. And it's the concept of opportunity costs. When most of us think about costs, we tend to think about transaction costs. We tend to think about price tag costs. How much does that t-shirt cost? How much will it cost me to take this class? Which is why sometimes we end up wasting our own time just because someone says free, free, attend this two hour session for free. There's no transaction cost. There's no price tag cost. But what Kraywitz was illustrating here was opportunity costs. Opportunity cost refers to the value that you have to forego because of the opportunities you sacrifice when you say yes to something else. If I spend two hours debating you on Twitter, then that means I gotta say no to the two hours that I'll be talking with my mom on the phone or the two hours that I can spend, oh, I know, working on my creative idea, working on my creative project. And you know, one of the, one of the fundamental human needs we have, a need that makes us very easy to manipulate is this desire to make sense to others. We all love that good feeling we get when we say, hey, everybody, I'm working on this new project. I'm launching this new business. And then our friends listen to it and they say, wow, you're so smart. You're so creative. I really like that. It just feels like it pumps you up and motivates you, right? But a lot of times, friends, family, strangers, they do the opposite. They say, uh, I'm not picking up what you're putting down. Uh, that sounds stupid to me, or that sounds boring to me. I don't even get you know, what the heck you're reacting to in the world? Like, like what is going on? And, and, and you can, you can spend some time, you know, trying to make sense, trying to paint the picture, but you have to understand that's different from actually building your business. That's different from actually creating the project. And every minute that you spend trying to make sense out of your life, sense out of your dreams, sense out of the things that you want to do to somebody that doesn't understand you is a minute that you are not spending actually doing the work necessary to make this thing happen. And if the people you're trying to make sense to, if these aren't your future customers, if this isn't the market that you're trying to serve, if this isn't the demographic that you are called to help out and solve problems for, might wanna think twice about carrying on with that debate. Wayne Dyer calls this the sacred power of silence. He says, when you have a dream, when you've got a project that you wanna work on, don't spend all your time telling everybody about it. Resist that temptation. Because what happens is if when people disagree or they say they don't like it, your energy goes out in the direction of their response to you rather than in the direction of the creative work you need to do to make results happen. But TK, wait a minute, TK. Surely there's something that we can learn by arguing, having all of these intellectual debates about the viability of our creative ideas. Surely, surely, surely. Well. I actually think here's another point that's missed, and this is what causes a lot of people to waste their own time by acting as if they need to give everyone who wants to argue with them an audience. And here it is. The things you learn from trying stuff out and from experimenting will, you, will be far more useful to you 
than just not doing what you want to do because someone says, hey, I don't think it's going to work. And here's my reason why. I mean, you only got so much time anyway, but one of the best things you can do if you have a creative idea is to formulate a non-destructive way to experiment. Just because you have a business idea doesn't mean you need to dump your life savings into it for the first iteration. Just because you've got something that you want to try doesn't mean you need to put yourself in a situation where not winning means that you are embarrassed forever and never able to get a job again. There is a way for you to experiment with your creative projects and business ideas that don't require you to go all in on the first day. So I think a lot of times we value being right more than we value the, the self-discovery and the wisdom, the experiential wisdom that can come from just doing the darn thing. So even if your idea is wrong, even if your friends with all their intellectual arguments are right that your business is gonna fail, if you can formulate a non-destructive way to experiment with it, it's better to find out that you're wrong that way than to just spend all your time listening to them and never doing the things that you wanna do. You'll come out a lot more wise on the other side and you might find out that you're right. Let's move to the next tweet because it's related. All right, if the conclusion is anything other than freedom, re-examine the premises. So there was a guy who fell in love with the girl. They had a great time every time they hung out. And he told his buddy, you know, I'm thinking about marrying that girl, man. Like, what do you think of her? And his buddy says, oh, nah, she's bad for you. And he says, you know what? I'm so glad I asked you for your advice. Woo, I dodged a bullet. Later on, that guy gets a job offer and he's, and, and he's really excited. It sounds like his dream job. And he goes to a buddy and he says, hey, man, I'm thinking about taking this job. What do you think? And his buddy says, oh, you know, I heard really bad things about that company. I heard there's no room for growth. They don't treat their employees right. And the friend says, you know what? I'm glad I talked to you about it. Woo. I dodged a bullet because I talked to you. Then a little bit later on, that friend gets an, an, an itching to, to, to move somewhere like New York, a big city. And he says, I think I, I want to go to the big city. I think I can really stretch out who I am in a place like New York. And he asks his friend and his friend says, nah, man, you know, it's like dangerous in New York. The taxes are too high. You really shouldn't do that. You're better off where you are. And he says, you know, I'm glad I asked you. I dodged a bullet because of my conversation with you. You know, dodging bullets is a real phenomenon. But dodging bullets is not the same thing as creating the results that matter most to you. There's a difference between dodging a bullet, bullet and fulfilling a dream. And there are people in life, they go through their entire lives never trying the things they want to do. And they think they're successful because all they've done is they've dodged bullets. They have found someone who can come up with a negative, discouraging argument for all the things they want to try. They've never tried any of those things. But woo, I dodged a bullet. And my message to you is don't be too proud of yourself for dodging bullets. Is dodging bullets a good thing? Absolutely. Dodge every single one that's aimed at you. But you got to think a little more holistically about what success is, what personal fulfillment is, than just the negative side of dodging bullets. What do you really want to create? What do you want your life to look like? And what are the arguments for that too? The reason I wrote this tweet is because I've talked about this before. We tend to be skeptical of positive sounding messages in a way that we're not when it comes to negative sounding messages. We kind of have this understandable evolutionary bias towards respecting harsh sounding negative critical things that people say as if they're more likely to be true. You know, that's something that really deserves my attention. Now, if somebody tells me you're beautiful, you're brilliant, you're gonna be successful, things will work out for you. We put on that scientific hat, and we demand all sorts of evidence, but if somebody's like, ah, a scam, or things won't work out for you, or it'll be really bad, or you'll regret it, like the scientific hat goes right off. We don't demand much evidence for that at all, and we just absorb the negative message and allow ourselves to be limited by it. So here's a question I wanna give you. The next time you've got something that you wanna do, and, and maybe you talk to somebody who says, well, uh, maybe you should do it this way, or you talk to somebody that says, nah, don't do it. The question I want you to ask yourself is this, who wins when you believe that? When someone gives you advice, when someone tells you what to do, who wins if you accept that it's true? You know, it's so funny because, you know, I'll, I'll go somewhere and I'll give a talk or I'll, I'll talk with young people and, 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 you know, maybe I'll talk about some idea like, hey, you have the permission and the power to be the predominant creative force in your own life. And people say, well, uh, you know, that sounds like, uh, like Oprah Winfrey uh, positivity. And, and, and I asked him, I said, okay, well, 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 who's laughing at you 
as you laugh at the idea of your own power. Who wins if you believe the opposite? If you believe that you don't have the permission and you don't have the power to be the predominant creative force in your life, who wins? Because it certainly ain't you. Who profits from you believing that you're just a lackey, that you don't make a difference, that you're just someone who uh, should just take orders from someone else and let somebody else dictate what your life is all about? Who wins? If the answer is somebody other than you, you might wanna at least take a few minutes to rethink that answer. Because if people are giving you advice in a way that moves you away from your freedom, it's not enough to just sit back and be like, woo, I dodged a bullet, didn't make any mistakes, uh, didn't commit any errors, uh, didn't take the risk of making myself look stupid. That's not what life is about. Life is about becoming the best possible version of yourself. It's about actualizing your potential. It's about creating the results that matter most to you. And if the arguments you're listening to are leading you in the opposite direction, just think twice. That's all. That's all I'm asking you to do. Think twice. Peace.